Hello everyone, welcome to Barrier Breach, a series where we go out of bounds in some of our favorite indie horror games. I figured it was about time we tackled Christmas Massacre, which is one of my favorite games to come from Puppy Combo. Although not as intricate as other games from this developer, there was still a lot to go over and show off since there are so many different environments and levels. Without wasting any more time, we out. So something really cool that was added after I had already beaten this game is this special training level which serves as an introduction and tutorial to the world of Christmas Massacre. The aim of this level is to simply show you all of the different gameplay mechanics such as stealth and combat which are crucial elements to the game. There's not too much to go over here but I still thought it'd be nice to see what this training level looks like from above. This place is pretty small and compact, only serving to give you different instances of the random civilians who you have to avoid, such as these people sitting on the couch watching TV, this guy who patrols this hallway infinitely, and of course the people who are just randomly dancing for no reason with no signs of stopping anytime soon. Again, like I said, not anything here that you can't already see through regular gameplay, but it's always nice putting the camera in spots way up in the corner of the room, which makes for some really cool shots. Other than that, we have these set of ceiling lights that I was able to spawn in, and this cube just a bit away from the main playable area, which if you played this game before, is actually the costume switcher screen, which displays all of the different outfits we get to wear once we unlock them in game. This box does appear in every single level, just so you know, so if you see a large cube off in the distance later in the video, just know that this is that. So onto the first level of this game, which is actually just an intro segment. As you all know, when starting the game, you are met with a quick cutscene of Mother Apollonia scolding Larry and telling him that he is not allowed to attend the party. Little did she know that this would end up being Larry's villain origin story, which sets off a series of large murders that go on for another 25 years. So one thing I really like about the first level is that we get to see Larry when he was a kid, and he's just small as f Larry's feet are oddly shaped and pointed, and also clipping through the ground which makes me believe that his model was simply just shrunken to achieve this small version. Taking the camera out, we can see that this is the same exact model as the Catholic school in Nun Massacre, just heavily modified for the purposes of this cutscene. Something really wacky that I discovered is this unclothed woman who is just randomly dancing in the middle of this pitch black hallway for literally no reason at all. This is just so weird to me because it's impossible to see this, let alone get here since once you finish the cutscene, you load into the full version of this environment. For YouTube purposes, I will have to blur this, but I just want you to know that when you first load up the game and begin this cutscene, there is a woman getting her freak on not too far off. Once finishing this cutscene, you load into the full version of the school, which is actually just the Nun Massacre map with the other half of the school removed. I did explore Out of Bounds and Nun Massacre quite a while back, so if you want to see the full exploration of this school and its different variants, there is a link in the description and a title card for those who haven't seen it. I'm not going to spend too much time here since of course I already did a deep dive into this map, but there are still some differences here that are worth going over. So here you can see that this version of the Catholic school only contained two floors and the bottom area since the rest weren't needed. Everything is exactly the same as Nun Massacre except for this woman taking a shower and the kids downstairs that are just going crazy. I love the way puppet combo characters look like dancing. There's this sort of janky, unrealistic, low poly nature to them that just makes it an absolute treat to watch. Now that I think about it, this game is full of people just randomly dancing, so get used to seeing this. The Nun, probably fed up and tired of watching these kids, is just sitting in the chair probably wondering when the day is going to be over. I might be wrong about this, but I believe this model is Fukat, a face you might be familiar with if you played Night Shift. I wouldn't be surprised if Puppet Combo just decided to reuse his face and put it on a different model since I found another guy who looks eerily similar to the man we see in the basement at the end of Murder House. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this first level. It's pretty much the same as the regular map but with just only two floors and the bottom area. We will make a return here at the very end of this video so stick around for that. Following the first level, we get our first chance to explore Larry's house, which doesn't have too many things to show off. I first wanted to start by giving you a top-down view of this environment, and as you can see, this map is quite large for just a small house to be placed on it. I know it's kind of hard to see with all the clipping, but this entire plane is filled with trees as well. There's nothing here that's hidden or worth going over, so we're going to move on to the next level, but this environment does change up a bit over time, which I will show you when the time comes. Wait, hold up. Before we go any further, I know a lot of you are are probably wondering how Larry looks like underneath the mask, so here you go. I honestly didn't know what I was expecting, but this is still pretty cool, I guess. I actually almost forgot to unmask Larry in this video, but someone reminded me during a live stream, and I'm so glad they did. And uh, 
I don't know what to think of this, honestly. We also did something similar with the Butcher um, back in Stay Out of the House, but this is the first time we get to see like a main playable character's face. You know, this is super cool and uh, I'm glad I did it and I just wanted to show you guys. All right, let's move on to the actual video. So this first level sees us spawning in this large snowy forest, which has a bunch of... Wait, hold on. If you look at the ground closely, you actually will notice that this is the exact same plane that Larry's house uses, which you can tell by the very specific trail slash paths that branch off from the house. I'm just going to go ahead and flat out say that this very plane is actually used for every single level in this game. I always thought the spawn locations looked pretty similar, but I guess I didn't actually think it would be the exact same asset. Nothing hidden or out of bounds here, so let's head inside. So unlike other barrier breaches, most of the levels in this game follow a very similar structure, with that just being a box with rooms inside. Despite this fact, the insides of these boxes change quite a lot from level to level. Here you can see how this one only takes up a small portion of the entire box, while others may use the entire space for larger scenes. The only cool thing I could find is this hidden model right here beside this woman sitting on the couch, this random set of people out of bounds, and these people up here that are floating and appear to be progressively getting higher and higher as time goes on. The other side of this house is pretty much the same, but is even smaller, boasting a total of three rooms and a hallway. There's these doors that are placed out of bounds, which are maybe going to be used at some point if this environment was larger. Also, I was able to spawn in this axe just over here, which I found to be quite cool. I actually ended up picking it up, but unfortunately, it doesn't appear to be an equipable item since I wasn't able to use it. Next is the store level, and like I mentioned before, this is on the same environment as Larry's house. If the trails weren't enough, I was able to spawn in the previous house that we just entered just to show you that the environment is the exact same. It's just the buildings that change. This is probably one of the more memorable levels from this game and definitely one that stood out to me. This specific level holds a special place in my heart since when I first made the gameplay of this, I was at 333 subs with nothing but a dream of getting to where I am now. I actually took a picture of when I first uploaded this game to my channel and it's so crazy to see how far we've come. Little did I know that I'd be revisiting this game through a different lens and at a completely different point in my channel. It's crazy how life works. Anyways, everything is pretty much the same as when you're playing it yourself, apart from these Christmas decorations that I was able to spawn in. I think these were potentially for another Christmas tree to be placed here, but who knows. I also just straight up removed the floor, walls, and ceiling, and this is giving major Night of the Consumer vibes. So upon finishing the store level, we are sent back to Larry's house where we get our first change. Unfortunately, this change comes at the cost of an unfortunate individual who finds himself trapped in Larry's basement only to get his cheeks roasted and cooked. Pause. The next level is yet again another house, and yes, it's still in the very spot where Larry's house and various other buildings would be. I did notice that there is quite the pit under the house, but I believe that was just to make space for Larry's basement. So this is the point of the game where I'd say the levels begin to get a lot harder and more complicated when it comes to trying to wipe out everyone without getting caught. Salute to this woman for reading a book when the TV is on right in front of her. But I do wonder what this book is about since we saw the same book being held by one of the workers in the store level. Oh yeah, and people dancing as well. Upstairs is pretty much the same thing, nothing too crazy going on here. I did spawn in the axe again, and as you can see, it's clipping through the wall. I know these are all things you've seen before, but I just loved putting the camera in spots like these. It feels so cinematic, and I feel like I'm not supposed to be here. So we get to the brothel level, and this is the first time the environment is drastically changed in order to fit the context of where this building is supposed to be. Don't worry, this is still on the same plane that I showed you all before, just with the removal of the trees and the addition of buildings to replace it. When you're down on the ground, this actually feels so different, which goes to show just how skilled these game developers are at making the most out of so little. Inside, we have these fine ladies who are, excuse my language, going absolutely stupid on the dance floor. I actually got them to stop somehow, and it feels so uncanny since they should be schmooving. Next, we have these guys, and uh, yeah, these outfits are devious. Nah, these guys really be hitting that shit, bro, I'm sorry. I can stare at these puppy combo people dancing forever. Just upstairs we have a concert and this little area also holds a special place in my heart. For some reason, I remember a puppet combo ad of this exact setting which I will show you all on screen and I just love the vibes that came from it so being here this close without having to worry about being caught is uh, 
quite marvelous. Again, like we've seen and will continue to see, these people really just be going hard on the dance floor, and I'm all for it. On stage, we have this bro on the keys who should have probably changed into some more appropriate clothes before hopping on stage, and of course, this rock star lady who's shredding the strings on some SpongeBob end of the movie transcending God shooting laser beams from the end of the guitar to save the bikini bottom type. God damn. You know you're having a good night when you gotta take a break to hit the toilet with a beer still in hand. I love how after coming back from the bathroom, this woman instantly gets right back into the groove. No wind up or build up, just straight hips moving and head turning. Pretty cool environment to say the very least. So we make it back to Larry's house yet again, which means there is something different, and it's this stove that's comically growing and shrinking in size for some reason. Just upstairs, we have our first apparition of this old lady, which usually despawns when getting close enough, but as you all know, this is barrier breach and we go wherever the heck we want. I'm also going to skip ahead to the next time we go into Larry's house since we see something very similar, just in a different room. This genuinely creeps me out because the face is actually pretty disgusting and grotesque, but if I had to see it, so do you. Nearing the end of the game, we have the movie theater level, and this one too is definitely up there as one of my favorites. The outside follows the same idea as the previous level, where the trees are removed and replaced by these apartments and buildings to simulate a new environment, but as we all know, this is just merely a reskin. I couldn't really find anything crazy over here, except for this random house out of bounds all by itself. I don't even think you can see this when you're within the barrier, so I really have no idea why this is here. Pretty creepy. Alright, let's head inside. So I believe this level contains the most NPCs, which makes sense since this is a movie theater and there are going to be a lot of people here, naturally. One thing that makes me love this level is just how alive this setting feels. People are walking around, going into theaters and sitting down, which is the first time any environment felt this alive in any of the games I've covered so far. So I actually thought this was Janitor Jack the first time I started exploring, since he's rocking the same exact outfit as Jacksepticeye in Murder House, but unfortunately, it is not. There are a total of three screenings, with varying amounts of people in each of them. The projection booth is pretty normal too, with a worker who monitors and controls the films. It's pretty accurate too, with the worker just on his phone, which is something we all do while on the shift. This dude basically just walks back and forth, only staying in his top section. We also have a security guard who patrols the entire theater, not only going through the different rooms but also behind the screen and into the staff only section at the concession stand. While walking through this movie theater, you may have noticed some easter eggs and references to other puppy combo games such as Search Party and Murder House. Guys look, I'm in the popcorn! The staff only section is pretty simple, only holding some boxes, a microwave, and the stairs that lead up to the projection booth. Finally, we have the men's and women's bathrooms, where we have a fully working mirror, which I always love when games incorporate, and the men's bathroom where we see bootleg janitor Jack again. Nah, bro is cooked. Look at how dirty these seats are. Everyone pray for bro. Yeah, that's pretty much it for this second to last level. I will say that this is definitely the most complex and grand level original level at least, that this game has shown us so far. I would say the Catholic school is, but that comes from an unmasker of course, so in terms of levels exclusive to this game, this is the one for sure. So right before we head into the last level, we have this brief segment where Larry has to confront all of the countless lives he has taken in this morgue setting. I switched the type of graphics rendering so we can have a better look at the texture on these guys, and Jesus Christ. This is genuinely very haunting and I have no idea how this wasn't enough for Larry to just consider putting the knife down and go work a regular job at like Whole Foods or something. Apparently this guy doesn't give a damn since he's still puffing on the cig in the afterlife. Respect. Just in the next room, we have a backrooms type of thing going on here. No idea why Puppet Combo decided to have this room here to be honest. Finally, there's this long tube that you fall into that brings you to the end of the segment and this gives major Nun Massacre vent tunnel system vibes. Just before we go back to where it all started, the talking tree decides to give us another visit and tells us to commit another spree. This man won't stop yapping, god damn. So as mentioned before, we do make a return to the Catholic Church School once again but this time, Larry sees nothing but red. So as most of you have concluded, the school is the exact same one from Nun Massacre, just retextured and reskinned. 
If you watch my Nun Massacre Barrier Breach, you might already be pretty familiar with this environment since I've shown you it in all of its entirety. This time around to fit the setting of this game, they made everything snowy and added snow rather than rain. I mean yeah, you can probably tell this is the exact same environment, but you can probably tell by the path leading up to the school and the spawn point where we first spawned in as Miss McDonald. So inside we see pretty much the same things as we did when we first arrived here at the beginning of the video, but with the addition of the courtyard outside. Nah, this nun is really chilling though. I don't know how this woman is going so hard in the showers. I would be so scared that I could slip and fall and bust my head. I mean, yeah guys, we've pretty much gone over this environment like over three times already. So let's move on to the other half of the school. So just on the other side, we have these nun who are now rocking a red version of the nun fit, which was super cool the first time I saw them. I'm not too knowledgeable about the Catholic religion, so if anyone could inform me why there are nuns who wear red instead of black, that would be very cool. Yo, she tweaking. Tell me how I was going through the halls and I totally forgot that there's these set of kids going crazy in this room. Yeah, that's pretty much it for this side of the school, so let's go upstairs. Finally, just before our escape, we have this last top floor where the classrooms are located. Here we can see students attending their classes with a nun as their teachers. Bro is way too happy to be here. I know this is boring as f I mean yeah, same as before, there's really not that much going on here besides that. We do have this trigger zone where once we enter, we make it to the part where the nun is scolding us, so here is that part. Once you take her out, she just sits there and burns. RIP. I did get this weird thing to happen where the nun started floating up in the air as if she was standing, and this was pretty funny. You can see how her legs are shrunking way up to her waist, which was how Puppet Combo was able to get the illusion that she had no bottom half. Look at Larry looking jolly as ever. Finally, at the very end, I just want to load in all of these environments together just to show you all that this is indeed the same exact model that comes from Nun Massacre, just split up into different sections for gameplay purposes. Once we escape outside, we get to see the chaos that we cause, where we have to then run to our van and make it back home. The school now has fire coming from pretty much all of the sides, and the actual texture has been changed to this burnt, charcoal-like surface since, of course, the building is burning. Once we make it back home, Larry finds himself being held at gunpoint by these two cops, and there's no getting out of this one now. I love how the talking Christmas tree is in the back, just watching, knowing he snitched on us and got us caught. Larry honestly looks like he couldn't care any less. This guy over here is just happy to pull out the 9 on someone. Get this man fired ASAP! Finally, we have one more cop just besides the Christmas tree, and I know his feet is hurting from getting run over by this toy train. This is finally where we get the text that Larry has just been convicted and is going to be sent away. Wait, hold up. There is actually one more level I forgot to mention. We do have a final after credit environment which sees Larry escaping this asylum. Technically, this is also the first level in the sequel Blood Maniac which has this exact same cutscene and setting. I did consider adding Blood Maniac to this edition of Barrier Breach, but given how this section already overlaps with that game and how most of the levels in Blood Maniac are pretty much the same as the ones in Christmas Massacre, I decided to hold it off for potentially a Barrier Breach where I explore a bunch of smaller puppy combo games and mash it all into one video. As for now, this environment, titled Asylum, is pretty small containing one recreational room, a series of hallways, a flight of stairs, a bathroom, another set of hallways with some nurses, and finally the entrance. Bro is locked in, he is not concerned about the baddie behind him. Pretty cool for a post credit level. So that is going to do it for this episode of Barrier Breach. For the longest, I held off this game since I didn't really know what exactly I was going to cover, but once actually doing it, I found myself recording various things for hours. Despite this game branching off greatly from the traditional style of puppet combo games, which consists of the protagonist running from the antagonist, it was still extremely fun to explore the various different levels this game had to offer. This game benefits more from the free cam than any other game, since one of the main mechanics is getting caught, so removing that entirely allowed us to really get up close to the tons of NPCs we've seen along the way without scaring them. If you liked this episode of Barrier Breach, make sure to check out the full playlist which will be linked in the description and at the end of this video, and I hope you stick around for more. Anyways, it's your boy Blind, and I'll see you all in the next one. Stay safe, and make sure you get at least 7-8 to eight hours of sleep tonight. Peace out.